Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So I, I am hoping that, uh, you know, this video, this title is not throwing you off 100%. It will probably be like, long range outlook, major pattern change, July Arctic blast, something like that. And uh, I, the reason I am going to such extreme levels calling this such cool weather is uh, not to get views or anything like that is it's simply because i see other people that are big on youtube in terms of weather but they don't uh either they forecast for a specific area and the, their area won't get hit with by this or they just uh i don't know they just chose not to focus on this which is 100 percent fine but i just wanted to get some attention to this because it will feel really chilly with this pattern it will be much more rainier with this pattern change so this is something definitely to worth take note of because people will get affected by this as much as by the heat um possibly i wouldn't go to say this is, you know, in proportional amounts of horrendous temperatures. I mean, it's just going to be chillier and cooler, but it's it's an, basically, I'll show you the anomalies. They're pretty surprising. Um, before we go any further, if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, enjoy this content, uh, like to become part of uh, this channel's community, we are going to be making much more videos throughout July, August, September, October, November. I mean, that is like the busy season of my YouTube channel, so... If you want to join me uh, with that, please consider doing so. Now, if we look, <clears throat> this is a GEFS, but first I want to show you the GFS because this is just one single model, and you can see right now a little bit cooler, a little bit warmer. Nothing too surprising. It's getting a little bit cooler. You know, it's not record-breaking heat. There's no record-breaking heat wave right now, but uh, there are some heat advisories up. For certain locations, they're getting impacted. But then look, Wednesday a little bit chillier across the northwest, but it still does not really start until Saturday. You could see Thursday it gets stay con stays confined to the area. Friday, and then you could see Saturday, uh, it starts lowering itself into more of the country. This is a pretty big lobe. <clears throat> if you were to look at, sorry, I needed to shoo away my. So I need to shoo away my cat, but uh, if we were looking at this during uh, at the anomalies, this would be okay. Match that color to here, eight to ten degrees below average, which is substantial. Um, is it you know record breaking? No, but it's definitely a. Uh, it's fair to call it an equivalent of an Arctic blast in in July, because in the winter time, if um, anything that's considered an arctic blast is something that brings pretty low temperatures, you know, 10 to 50 degrees below average. Because if you're averaging highs in the 28 degrees for, say, in the coldest time of the year, and you get 10 to 15 degrees below average, you could be looking at 18 to 15 degrees during the day, which could get much colder during the night. And these anomalies during the summer obviously aren't as impactful because 10 to 15 degrees from 90 to 75, it just brings you more pleasant weather. But uh, it's still, you know, I want to pay attention to this because many people uh, will already get impacted by this. Say even for the 4th of July, it will be rainy across the Midwest. Uh, it will be a pretty rainy uh, system going on. So... Yeah, maybe I finally got your attention now, uh, because that's what it seems people care most about, their 4th of July plans. And if we go to Sunday, already spread into the rest of the Midwest, and into the uh, good chunk of the Midwest, and look, another one is coming in from the Northwest, and these keep spilling from Canada. And notice uh, only a few areas don't experience the cool temperatures, the South being one of them, and maybe Texas, uh, those extreme uh, southern portions of the country where they're isolated by mountainous terrains. Now, if this is only goes out to 180 hours because it's a new model run. If we go to the 12Z, which is an older model run, a uh, couple hours early, I should say, a couple of hours older, uh, we see it's very similar. That first wave becomes on Saturday. Uh, I feel like if it's undermining it a little bit, this model uh, and the 18Z is doing a better job handling it. And you can see Tuesday, another wave is coming in, and look at those anomalies. That is, you know, that is that is impressive, I should say, at the very least. And that, look at that, that that's cold. 
and uh, or cold. That's you know, if this happened in winter, that would be cold. And if we keep going, this is hour 300. We still see. Look at that. Look at that. Obviously, that could be influenced by a thunderstorm or something. Uh, in, you know, happening over to the cool area that's already cool in the first place. But if we look at that, that is. 12 to 15 degrees below average right there in southern Wisconsin and it seems like it will dwindle <clears throat> will dwindle as we go on into the uh, longer range it's it looks as if uh, you know by mid-july we could be looking at some warmer temperatures for much of the country but let me tell you one thing uh, the climate prediction center is not doing a good job at all I mean look at the 6 to 10 day outlook July 7th through the 11th really like that's not uh, impressive at all a little bit below average across the northwest not even the northwest it's like the rockies 8 to 14 a little bit more impressive but you can see it's a little bit cooler warmer along the sides and the south but you can see it's, it's an above average pattern in terms of precip it looks fairly rainy which should be enough to give you a a heads up you know that this could ruin your plans if you have any outdoor plans because the temperature may not so much but let's look at the people are saying oh that's just a gfs you know uh show us something else show us a a ensemble so let's go to ensemble and let's click on gefs which makes sense i'm showing you this this is all the gfs family members and they're called the GEFS. I, I'm, I'm not sure how many models go into this, but I'm pretty sure it's more than 15 or 20. And you can see right now, generally warmer, yes, but then look at that. They see this sharp contrast of chillier temperatures and look at this, ready? Uh, it just comes blasting through. It holds off, it seems, look, I mean, it pushes down into Northern South Dakota by Wednesday, but then Thursday, Friday, it doesn't make much, you know, progress, still warm across much of the country. But if we look uh, further, Saturday, Sunday, this cold air finally pushes in. May not look at all, but look, during the nights, it's much more, or during the days, it's a much more bigger anomaly. And you know why that makes sense? Because during the night, during the summer, all things even out. Even if it's a giant heat wave, it, you know, it cools off during the night. And usually when it's below average in the first place, it doesn't tend, I just realized this pattern, it just doesn't tend to uh, cool off. 10 to 15 degrees each night. I mean if it's already 75 it'll probably cool off to 70 But I don't think it'll cool off to 60 But if it's a heat wave, you know cool off, it'll, the cool off will be more drastic during the night and more noticeable That's why the anomalies are less noticeable look at this during the day it doesn't look like any uh, Attack of arctic or whatever you want to call it is uh, occurring But then during the uh, during the day you could see that sorry This is during the night and then during the day this happens and then during the night and then during the day you could see the anomalies are there and they can yeah, look at that. They get impressive. I mean, there's a whole lobe of cooler air across uh, by Friday, July 12th, and that whole week, that and that time frame, we could be looking at some chillier conditions, definitely across the central part of the country. And look at that. It can, maintains itself for a good chunk of uh, July, but it does again seem to wither off towards the end of the forecasting period. If we go to another ensemble, which is the GEPS, which involves even more models than the GFS, uh, we go quickly through this, and I wanna demonstrate that, look, it still shows that chillier air making its way across from the northwest into the slowly working its way into north central US. And again, same thing, during the night, not as big of an anomaly as during the day. And how do I know this? Look. Um, 12z that is at around seven o'clock in the morning that's usually the coolest time of the day seven o'clock in the morning six o'clock in the morning and then this is 18z which is two o'clock three o'clock in the afternoon which is usually the warmest time of the day and this is still around uh so this is seven or eight o'clock and still maintains that heat since it's summer it doesn't cool off and really until the sun sets which is usually around eight or nine uh, at this time of the year and you can see again during the day during the night during the day and uh, this is completely these are a bunch of models this isn't just one model so uh you know it's not just oh it's gonna change it's most likely gonna stay like this especially since i've made 10 other videos on this literally and they've all had the same message so uh you know heads up there's it's just it's an interesting pattern change and uh, you know nothing too destructive but definitely a little bit rainier and cooler and this should uh you know prompt you to uh, you know, stay alert. So thank you guys for watching and catch you guys in the next episode. See ya.